If I say the word growth, and we think of the word growth, you might give a definition means to expand. Now we do not want to start expanding physically, that we just physically expand and get bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't want to talk about that growth and everything. In fact, you know, something hit me the other day that, you know, all the sins that we preach on and everything and is that one of the sins that is not, there's no sin in heaven. So when we get to heaven, we don't have to worry about gluttony anymore because there's no sin. We can eat at the the table of the lamb. I mean, we got, we'll be able to eat as much as we want because and, and and so <laughs> we don't have to um, uh, worry about that sin. So we're not going to have to worry about that growth and the expansion there. But one of the things that just really hit me, and this is a very important thing that we have to understand, we want to have growth, grow to grow spiritually. That's a given. But we also want to grow that we did talk about growth of our church and growth of the kingdom and, you know, and so forth like this. Now, the thing that the Lord told me, the true growth to be grow spiritually and to grow even in our church is, is growth through love. Is growth through love. In Philippians 2 1, Philippians 2 1, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any vows of mercy, Verse 2, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. So when we look at this verse, I want to break it down a little bit, is if there's anything for us to live in for Christ, any benefit for living in Christ, any comfort of his love, or any fellowship in the Spirit, in our spirit, to his spirit, to our spirit, are that it all starts here. It, it starts when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior because God sent his son. He so loved him. And when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that he comes and he comes and he indwells in us. And with because of the love that God had through his son for us at the sacrifice, that love is actually going into us and is indwelling in us. Then it says, in if any bows in mercy. Now we have to understand that we the bows is we say we believe in our heart, but the vows are our inner part of our body. You know, when we see the vows, even in the physical, that we eat food and it goes down into our lower intestines, which we call our vows, and through that, the nutrients from the food that we eat goes out through the bloodstream to feed our heart, to feed our mind, to feed every part of our body. So, in us, that it is the center of our being is our vows. And so we have to understand, in the, in the spiritual sense in this, we have to understand is that here we have that we, because of Christ lives in us, he is centered in us. He indwells in us. That, that <coughs> mercy is in us. And so where it all comes in, if we want growth in our church or into the kingdom, 
we need to look at with the mercy, let the mercy come out. Now, Jesus, he was not really judgmental of the people or critical of the people. And so we have to learn to be merciful. But it comes from our inner being. Now, when we talk about that mercy and the inner part of us, actually, that is the seat of compassion. Mm. It is our conceit, our seat of compassion. That's where all compassion dwells in us in our most innermost being. Mm. And those that's where mercy comes from through our compassion. Now we always want to show mercy to people, but sometimes we cannot do it. And the reason why we do not allow the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the dwelling of Christ in us to show the compassion that He has put in us. So we have to be show compassion to other people. Now we can be passionate about something and that, that passion drives us to do something. But that compassion is the thing that just surrounds us that totally surrounds us, that totally envelops us. That is that love that just, just is so much in us that we look at things differently. And we are able to show mercy to people. We cut out the judgment of the, the critical spirit and we start showing mercy to them. We look past their sins and see their potential. We don't sit there and try to manipulate them we do not try to tell them what to do we don't try to do all these other things that we don't try to control them and if we try to control them we step over to witchcraft which is a controlling spirit so we have to understand that if there's any comfort of love and that love is our compassion that should just totally envelop us so when we look at it, we need to have compassion. We need to start looking at people compassionately with that love that comes out of us. We need to start showing people mercy because in God's love, He showed us mercy because yes. what we sh should deserve, we're not going to get. So we need to be able to show mercy. Now, there's something I, that has really been going through my mind, and there's a teaching that's been around for a long time. And I think it's been distorted. And I don't want to go against anybody's teaching, but it's the teaching that people say that you have to have tough love. Well, tough love is when you keep your standards and so forth like this, that you keep your standards. But it does not, sometimes we get into tough love and we want to manipulate people and we get them and we think, well, if we punish them, if we punish them, that's tough love. That's not tough love. Tough love is showing compassion to, to them, to show them mercy and be able to help them. But do not stand and do not participate in their actions. Mm -hmm. That's tough love. Just let them know I'm not going to tolerate that anymore and so forth like this, but we do not try to punish it them. So we have to understand that we look here that we say that the seed of our, if we want to grow, if we want to grow, we need to let that compassion that Christ had, that, that compassion that Christ had so much that he loved the church, that he died for it. Are we at the point that we want to grow, that we are so compassionate that we're ready to die for something that we really care about? Are we really willing to put ourselves out. And when I say die, 
That does not mean the physical death. That means to die to self. Are we willing to die to self and not saying, I want to be in control and I'm going to control you too. So we have to watch out if we want the growth and want the church to grow, we need to be learned to show compassion and love to each other and to love to our fellow man. Now when we say that, when you show compassion to them, that does not mean that just compassion to the people that you like. Just compassion to your fit people. But it's the, even the compassion to the people that despitely use you. People that are way out there that is middle of sin. We do not be into the punishment stage. I had a person say the other day, that, you know, we win people through love, not through punishment. And he made the statement, and he kind of made everybody think, how good is the prison system working? How good is the punishment working in prison? You know, if we learn to show love, and that's what it all boils down is we got to be so compassionate that, Lord, I might not know how to love, but because Christ is in me, let me feel that indwelling of Christ's love and compassion. Just as Christ loved the church, he died for the church. Just as we love others, then we're able to build up the church. As we go out into our life, do we show love to people or do we show contempt to people? There's a lot of difference. When we show contempt to people, all you're doing is putting up a barrier between you and them and you're not actually acting in love. You're just saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm not going to stand you. What would you say if God looked at you and said, hey, You've done so many things wrong and I just don't stand you. But because of that love and that compassion that he had and that mercy. Now see, part of the thing that we as a body need to get into our mind is that, that we should have that joy that, that God only can give. That joy that passes all understanding. But we have to get to the point that we become like-minded. That we all enjoy or all of us have that compassion for the lost. We have that compassion that we want to have that love for the people that irritate us and even to the sinner. But it also says you love the sinner and hate the sin. And so we got to get that into our being. Into our being. That we just have that compassion and love. We have that compassion that we want to build the church and load the kingdom. We have to be that in one accord. That we make to come together in oneness. And when I say... In one accord, that doesn't mean that we go out and get in a Honda and drive around. <laughs> one accord. I didn't know if you'd catch that. Yeah. But we have to say <laughs> that we understand. That we look here. That we see. <clears throat> that we need to get together. If we want to grow and expand, we need to come with that same compassion and that same love and be united together. We have to come together. Now he says in John 34, 13, John 13, 34. How many of you are still looking for John 34? Okay. <laughs> You're not going to find it. You'll be there until next week. John 13, 34 says... A new commandment I give unto you. 
that you love one another as I loved you, that you also love one another. Amen. Now, when we look at this, we have to understand this is a commandment and it's not a choice. It is a commandment that he says to us, we're supposed to love one another. Now, one of the things about love is, is that we say, well, some people are just so unlovable. Well, we have to get to the point that we look past their sins and see their potential. We also need to look. True love is that you can look through the person, enjoy the scenery. And the scenery is that when you see them come to Jesus Christ. The, that compassion that you care so much for them. That you will stand in the battle and stand in the gap for them and pray those sins off them. Now it says that you love one another. It's a commandment. It's, it's a commandment. It's not a choice. But I want to read something else to you. We say it's a choice, but also it's a decision. Wait a minute, you say a choice and a decision? Well, let's, let's look at James 1.25. James 1.25. It says, But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein and be not forgetful in the hearer, but doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now what I want to take out of this verse is the law of liberty. See, we are being given our own volition, our own free will to choose. And we, with that law of liberty, that we have to understand that he gives us the not a choice, but we have a choice to make the decision. Even though it was a commandment that we should do it, but he gives us a choice should we do it or not, to make a decision or not. Now we have to understand the law of liberty, we have a free will. And the free will is that, are we wanting to be obedient to the commandment? Mm. Or do we want to be disobedient to the command? He tells us to love one another. To love one another. And that's the way we're going to grow. Is by loving one another. Has anybody ever been critical of you? And you just thought, well, that, you know, that, that made me feel good, you know. I'm get crazy and uh, and and are judgmental of you. Oh, that's good. That they really showing me love, you know, and stuff like that. I have to repent because sometimes I get critical. Oh, y'all didn't know that. I mean, we all do. So I have to repent on that. But we have to understand that we got to get rid of that judgmental critical spirit to be able to show people love. We have to show them love. You know, we have to understand that we say it says to love one another. We have to make that decision to follow the commandment or not. God said there's really no choice in that. But in our flesh, there is a choice. Are we going to obey God or not? Or are we going to just be disobedient children? So we have to understand that when we look at things, we've got to quit being self-centered and keep wanting it our way. We have to watch out. And get rid of these selfish attitudes. We got to become totally unselfish. 
And you know what one thing it is that we understand really to show love to other people. And I want you to catch this. We want to seek the good for others. Christ died on the cross so we can have good and have eternal life. So we have to understand that we are seeking the good of others. That is what love is all about. Do we want the good for others? And that's how we grow. That's where we go. That when we don't put ourselves first, but put others and wanting the good to happen to them. We need, if we don't love, we're being disobedient. Because what did he say? He says that we should love one another. We should love one another. We should love one another. Said it three times. But I could say it over and over until we begin to love one another and quit being critical and judgmental and trying to control other people. That's not showing love. Keep not keep from trying to put them in the box so they get along with you. You know, as a body of Christ, every one of us has different personalities. Aren't you glad that everybody's not just like me? Or is but as person, aren't you glad you're not like me? I mean, I'm glad I don't have a twin. I'd really drive you crazy. So we see that we all are need each other. We all are like a big puzzle. A big puzzle. How many of you ever worked a thousand piece puzzle? Okay, you take it and you lay all the pieces out of the box and, and you take and you try to fit each piece in there. <clears throat> and you can't do it in one sitting. And you start fitting the pieces together and you even try to cram certain pieces in certain things and they won't fit. You know, and they just won't fit. And you just push them and they won't fit. And then after a while you find it. Well then, all of a sudden, you put it all together. But there's two pieces missing. And you say, I've worked this hard, i worked this hard, and now it's not complete. And then you look around and you just, I gotta get this puzzle fixed, I gotta get it done. And then you find pieces on the floor and then you get the puzzle fit together. And all that fitting together is actually showing the love and where how we need each other. Now, when we look at that puzzle, it's beautiful. But you know what? When you start taking it apart, and put it back in the box. It's no longer complete. And that's what a lot of people do. They start get into that judgmental stuff and quit loving person because, well, they just don't act or they're not doing and they're letting the scene rule their life instead of being compassionate to pray for them, to help them, seeking the good for them. You dismantle that puzzle and put them back in that box. So they cannot grow. Because when you put them back in the box, it's smaller. 
When that puzzle is out of the box, it is big and it's expanded. It's bigger than the box. What keeps us from growing is lack of love. Mm -hmm. Now, we say, well, we love people, we love people, but do we have that in the inner being in us that so much that shows compassion, no matter what they do or what they say, we're going to love them anyway. I know from years ago, I made this statement. I was at this church, and I told the people, I said, you know, some of you probably walked with the Lord longer than I have. Some of you probably read the Bible more than I have. Some of you might have prayed more than I have. But one thing I know, I will love you. And if, <coughs> he, and I know that sometimes loving people, we kind of get hurt in the physical, in our mental, in our emotional. We get hurt. But I said, that's the only thing I know to do is to love you. And that's what we got to get to this world not love the world, but love the people in the world. To love them so much that when we go out, they'll see that love and compassion in us. John 13, 35. It says this, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have one, have love one to another. If you have love one for another. The question is, that compassion of Christ that is in us. Are we going to release that compassion to other people? Or when we go out, that people will know that you are Christ's child or his disciple because we show love to them. My question is, if Christ is in us and he loved the church so much, do, are we going to release that compassion that he has in us that shows mercy, that wants that fellowship, that wants that comfort of love? Do we have that which is in us, because Christ is in us, do we want to release it? My question is, is this, how devoted are you to want growth? How devoted are we how devoted am I to want growth? But how devoted are we, me, you, devoted to show that compassion, mercy, and love to individuals? How devoted are we? Or do we just want our way all the time? 
How devoted are we to show that love? That's a question. How devoted are we that, that Christ in us that has put his full compassion in us that we make the decision to be obedient to the commandment to love one another. To make it just totally part of our life. When I was writing this message, a prayer came over me. And the prayer is this. Lord, fill me with your overflowing, with your overflowing and indwelling love. By my volition and free will, I will obey your commandment to love one another. May it be so deep-seated that mercy and compassion flows out of me to others. May I always be reminded to die to self and seek good for others. In Jesus' name. I want you to stand up and I want you to make this very personal in your life right now. Very personal in your life right now. That if we really want the growth, we will learn to love one another, be less critical, show mercy, but also love others no matter who they are. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world, he came for everyone. That not one just affairs, but for everyone. So that's, that's, that's the word of growth will come. Our growth will come by loving. How devoted are we for loving and releasing the compassion of Christ that Christ in us has? Mm -hmm. So let's repeat this right now. Lord, Lord, fill me, fill me with your overflowing, with your overflowing, indwelling love, indwelling love, by my volition, by my volition, and free will, and free will, I obey your commandment, I obey your commandment to love one another, to love one another. Be it so, be it so, deep seated, deep seated. That mercy and compassion, that mercy and compassion, flows out of me to others. Flows out of me to others. May I always, may I always, be reminded, be reminded, to die to self, to die to self, and seek good for others, and seek good for others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.